This is the Sterling battery to battery charger that we've just finished installing, so we'll take a quick look at the manual and then we'll go through our installation. This is the wiring diagram inside the manual. It's very simple. So you've got a positive that runs from your starter battery to the unit, a negative that runs back to the starter battery. Positive comes down to your leisure batteries and they recommend over here that you common your negative. So that's what this negative wire joining the leisure batteries to the starter battery is. Unsurprisingly, to install the battery to battery charger, we're going to need access to the starter battery. So for us in our crafter, and it's the same in the sprinters, it's under the passenger footwell, and it's just a few bolts to get to it. All right, we're in the battery compartment to try and install the Sterling battery to battery charger. So I'm just gonna take off this nut here. So I've already disconnected the negative, I should say. Take that out and don't lose that nut. Pop that somewhere sensible and safe. Take that cover off. Hopefully you can see in there there's a few fuses and some wires and handily a few empty spots as well. So we're going to use this top one probably just for simplicity. Down the battery compartment there we've just run a new cable. It runs under the passenger seats with those, under the driver's seat and then currently hopefully you can see down there right at the back it's running through the wall there. And into the living area. So that's the route we're going to run all our cables. There's already three holes down there. Run one positive, which we've done, and two negatives, all the way over to the battery down here, which is where they will all be attached. Right, we've just run our negative wire through as well. We were wondering how we were going to connect it down to that terminal down there, because on the Sprinter and Crafter there are no extra terminals on the battery stud here, or the battery terminal here, there's no extra studs or anything we can hook into. Uh, I've just taken this piece of trim off here, it's just a couple of screws to do that. And that cable there, which earths there, runs all the way along to the negative battery terminal. So we're going to take that off up there and use that as our earth point, because if it's good enough for their battery, it's good enough for our battery to battery charger see here now the finished product for all our wiring so we've added this cable this cable and this cable we've labeled them all so first things first on the positive we've added in there a hundred amp fuse which hopefully you could see there on that top one and that runs all the way across to the unit we've then got the negative from the battery to battery charger and we've got the common ground in order to do the ignition live cable you're going to need to locate some fuses so we've got some under the driver's seat box here so these are the ones we're going to use we have our multimeter set up here and so you're going to have to put the negative onto any bare metal so the door catches often works so that's what we're going to use and then we're going to go along and test each of these fuses one at a time with the engine off and then do it again with the ignition on because we want to find one that has no volt with the ignition off but does have voltage when the ignition's turned on. So each fuse has two little metal connections so you can use either of those for the positive to read your voltage. Now we've worked out which ones might work we need to turn the ignition on and do that test again and see which ones go live with the ignition on. So that's now live with the ignition on. Number five is also live with the ignition on as is that so many to choose from. So we're going to use this breakout blade fuse holder, which is just a blade fuse that goes to two different fuses with a wire on it. We've crimped our ignition live feed onto that. So we said we were going to use number five, so we'll pull that out. And I've already inserted a fuse of the same size. So we'll pop both of them together in there like that. And then we'll put that back into number five like so. So that means now this is fed when this goes live, which will be when the ignition is turned on. It's as simple as that to do an ignition live feed. Once the ignition live feed is done, all that's left is to wire up the unit. Now originally we had this attached to the wall, but it was just way too fiddly to get the wires in like that. So we had to take it off, put the wires in, and then remount it to the wall.
we've got the unit itself installed now down here so we've got this positive cable that runs all the way over under that switch and into here so if I take that cover off that's got uh, another 100 amp fuse in it just like the one by the starter battery does we've got this is the common ground which runs down to our shunt down there and then we've got the negative that comes out the unit they poke through those three holes there and then that little one is the ignition live which comes in up underneath the unit so that's what this side of things looks like we've shown you the battery side of things so let's go and turn the engine on and hope it works after you turn it on for the first time you'll want to set up your charging profile so you press both of those buttons and now you can set your charging profile for your battery type so you can choose what battery type you've got we've got LiPo 4 battery so we're going all the way up to the top you can either leave it for 30 seconds or you can press and hold both buttons for a few seconds and that's now set the right battery profile so that's the unit turning itself on going through its startup the lights along the top tell you what state of charge it's doing so first furthest left is boost then you've got absorption conditioning and float mode our battery's fully charged so pretty soon it should basically go all the way over to float this left hand column tells you the voltage incoming from the batteries so all the way down from 12.2 up to 15.4 at the moment we're getting about 14.6 coming into the unit and then on this right hand side here you've got either F for flashing or S for solid so both of these are on solid so that is telling us that there's no fault and the regen timer is off and that's because we've got that ignition feed going down Hopefully you found this video useful or informative. We've got other electrical videos coming up soon, so make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss those.